students good morning to all hope all are fine today we are going to discuss about a new topic from the chapter fiber to fabric okay it is the last topic of our unit so listen carefully this is part 3 video and we can move to the video okay are you ready from cocoon to silk how we get silk from cocoon there are different processes including okay so we can move to the this topic okay let's start okay for obtaining silk moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get silk threads we know that silk is obtained from silk moths or silk worm okay for this for obtaining silk what we do moths are reared okay what do we reared yes grow fully and care them okay reared and their cocoons are collected to get silk threads then we reared the silk moths and their cocoons then what to do then collected silk threads from cocoons so we can say that in the cocoon stage we get silk threads right okay for obtaining silk moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get silk threads okay then we can go into discuss about rearing silk worms how we rear rearing of silk worms how we rear silk worms okay there are different steps different uh, steps to follow this for rearing silk worms okay first of all a female we know that female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time at a time female silk moths lays about hundreds of eggs okay this is silk moth and lays hundreds of eggs at a time okay then what to do the eggs are stored on strips of cloth or paper and sold to silk worm farmers okay these eggs are collected so stored in a paper or strips of cloth we stored eggs eggs okay and then sold to silk worm farmers okay then sold to farmers silk worm farmers Okay, first of all, uh, we know that silk, uh, silk uh, female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs. Then what to do? The eggs are stored in a paper or a cloth, strips of cloth, etc., and sold to silk worm farmers. Okay, then the farmers keep wh what the farmers do? The farmers keep eggs under hygienic conditions and under suitable conditions of temperature and humidity. okay the farmers keep this eggs very carefully under hygienic condition very cleaned condition okay and under suitable conditions of temperature and humidity okay then the eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature for the larvae to hatch from eggs understand the eggs are then warmed okay heated warmed to a suitable temperature this uh, uh, eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature please listen to the word is suitable temperature okay for the larvae to hatch from eggs okay we know that in this stage larvae is produced larvae in order to coming out larvae okay larvae should come out from the eggs for that the eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature okay then next one the larvae so the larvae are come out uh, comes out from the eggs then the larvae called caterpillars or silk worms eat mulberry leaves day and night and increase enormously in size okay we know that silk worms 
Okay, food is mulberry leaves. And the eggs are the larvae called caterpillar or silkworm eat. They eat mulberry leaves day and night. And also they increase enormously in size. High. Mm, they increase in size. Okay. Then next one. What to do? Okay. Then the worms are kept in clean bamboo trays along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves. Okay. The worms are kept in clean bamboo trays. These worms. These silk worms are kept in a clean bamboo trays along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves. Also, uh, they uh, want the for feeding. We introduce this mulberry leaves. Okay. Then next one. After 25 to 30 days, the caterpillars stop eating and move to a tiny chamber of bamboo in the tray to spin cocoons. So we know that these caterpillars after 25 to 30 days, the caterpillars stop eating. They stop eating and then move to a tiny chamber of bamboo. They stop eating and move to a tiny chamber of bamboo in the tray to spin cocoons. For what? Okay, for spin cocoons. They spin cocoons. For that, they move to the tiny chamber of bamboo. Okay, right? Then next one, the caterpillar or silkworm spins the cocoon inside which develops the silk moth. Okay, at last the caterpillar or silkworm spins the cocoon inside which develops the silk, silk moth. Okay, these are the rearing of, steps of rearing of silk moth. Okay, then we can revise that. First of all, a female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time. Then the eggs are stored on strips of cloth or paper and sold to silk worm fiber farmers. Okay. Then the farmers keep eggs under hygienic conditions and also under suitable conditions of temperature and humidity. Then the eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature for the larvae to hatch from eggs. Then the larvae called caterpillars or silk worms eat mulberry leaves day and night and increase enormously in size. Okay, this is the picture. Larvae or caterpillar feeding on mulberry leaves. Okay, then the worms are kept in clean bamboo trays. These worms are kept in, in a clean bamboo trays along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves. Then after 25 to 30 days, the caterpillars stop eating and move to a tiny chamber of bamboo in the tray to spin cocoons. Then the caterpillar or silkworm spins the cocoon inside which develop the silk moth. Okay, these are the rearing of silk moth. Now we can discuss about processing silk. How we process the silk? You know that silk is obtained from the cocoons. Okay, so we rear the silk worm. Okay, then next one, the processing of silk. Okay. Next, the processing of silk. Okay. A pile of cocoons is used for obtaining silk fiber. A pile, a group of cocoons is used for obtaining silk fiber. Okay. Then the cocoons are kept under the sun or boiled or exposed to steam. Okay, these cocoons are kept under the sun. Or what to do? Or it is boiled. Or it is exposed to steam. Okay, then the silk fibers separated out. Then the process of taking out threads from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk. Okay, it is a new term for you. Reeling the silk. What are you reeling the silk? Yes, it is the process of taking out threads from the cocoon. Okay, process of taking out threads from the cocoon for use 
as silk. It is called reeling the silk. Okay. Reeling is done in special machines. Reeling is done in special machines which unwind the threads or fibers of silk from the cocoon. Then silk fibers are then spun into silk threads. Silk fibers are then spun into silk threads which are woven into silk cloth by weavers. Okay, this is the processing of silk. First of all, a pile of cocoon or a group of cocoon is used for obtaining silk fibers. Then the cocoons are kept under sun or boiled or exposed to steam. Then the silk fibers separate out. Then what we by reeling the silk? The process of taking out threads from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk. Now silk fibers are then spun into silk threads which are woven into silk cloth by weavers. Okay, these are the processing of silk. So in this video we are discussing about the new topic from cocoon to silk. Okay, then rearing silk worm and processing silk. Life history of silk moth or rearing of silk worm. The lifespan of a silkworm is only about two months. The life cycle of silkworm has four stages. First, the egg. Second, silkworm. Third, pupa or chrysalis or cocoon. And fourth, moth. Eggs are kept in cold storage for about six weeks after they are laid. The eggs are bathed in warm water and air dried. Then they are incubated until they hatch and become worms. Hatching takes about 30 days. A tiny worm white in color and about five to six millimeters that is a quarter inch long hatches out of an egg this delicate worm needs a lot of care and a silent and sanitary environment is a must for its survival these worms are placed on bamboo trays covered with straw mats and a layer of selected, finely chopped mulberry leaves. The greedy worm is said to devour about 30,000 times its initial weight in the six-week feeding period. During this period, the silkworm sheds its skin, that is, molts, four times. When the worm ceases to eat, it attaches itself to a piece of straw or climbs the branches of trees or shrubs placed in the rearing house and begins to spin its cocoon. And so the magic begins. The spinning of cocoon in one continuous thread takes about eight days. The amount of usable silk in each cocoon is quite small and about 5,500 silkworms are required to produce, you know how much? About 1 kg of raw silk. That is, 2,500 to 3,000 cocoons are needed to make one yard of silk cloth. No wonder it is so expensive. Saracen, a gum-like liquid, exudes from the two openings under the worm's mouth and causes the fibers to adhere to one another. These filaments get hardened 
on exposure to air. The silkworm covers itself with these filaments and once the cocoon is completed, it sleeps for 15 to 20 days. The cocoons are collected and to get silk thread, the foremost step is to kill the insect inside the cocoon. Now we can go into the last session of this video exercise. First one, make sketches of the two stages of the silk moth which are directly related to the production of silk. So, any two stages. You sketch any two stages of the silk moth which are directly related to the production of silk. The second one is about second question is match the following. First one, scoring. Second one, mulberry leaves. Third one, yak. And fourth one, cocoon. And the next section, first one yields silk fibers, wool yielding animal, food of silk worm, reeling, cleaning, sheared skin. Okay, you can match this. Then you should write this exercise in your notebook. Thank you students.